Now we're going to hear about this from people who are walking the walk, who are actually out there, as, uh, as several of the, of the panelists said, um, helping address that mismatch. There are a number of jobs, unquestionably, that are b disappearing in our economy. And perhaps the most iconic example of that is what's happening in Appalachia and coal country. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, talking last night with a guy named Rusty Jones um, from uh, uh, that part of the country, eastern Kentucky, um, doing some amazing things in terms of reskilling coal miners um, to be prepared for the information economy. And we're very lucky to have uh, Maria Zuber, um, our head of uh, research here at MIT, who also happens to hail from coal country, from Appalachia, and can talk a little bit with some uh, uh, in-depth knowledge about how that's been affecting people and some of the things we can do going forward. So please join me in welcoming uh, Maria and Rusty. OK, thank you, Eric. Um, all right, so in, um, in the US today, there's about 80,000 uh, coal mining jobs. And we could probably add another 60,000 if we talk about the workers who uh, work at coal-fired power plants. Uh, those coal-fired power, power plants, a lot of them are long in the tooth, and they're getting close to their uh, uh, reasonable working lifetime. So, um, so those numbers used to be a lot higher. Okay? And, um, and the reason that they're not as high as they used to be uh, is, uh, is mainly because of the displacement of coal jobs due to the growth of uh, natural gas and all manner of renewables. Okay, now um, uh, these new energy sources are not only cleaner, um, but they are also getting to be very commercially competitive. So, um, so coal is not uh, coming back in the long term. Um, and then because of automation, uh, mines that are still operating need a lot fewer workers than they used to need. And that's not going to change either. So actually, most of the jobs in the coal industry um, were lost a long time ago, um, uh, many decades ago, actually. And, um, but despite that, the loss of coal jobs is really taken as a type example of large-scale economic disruption um, of you know, regional parts of, of our country. And so why exactly is that the case? Okay. Now, um, now what I think is, uh, is that the reason for that is that, uh, that these jobs are you know, incredibly physically demanding. And the people who took on these jobs to power our energy system and provide uh, energy for us um, put their physical well-being at risk um, so that they could provide for their family. And, uh, and the system let them down. Okay. And so, um, and, uh, and I think I know what I'm uh, talking about in this regard, because this is really the story of my family. So, um, so I grew up in eastern Pennsylvania in uh, anthracite country. And both my grandfathers were coal miners, and, um, and all my uncles were coal miners. And, uh, and these folks lost their jobs decades ago, okay. decades ago. And, um, and the area where I grew up in, where I still go back and visit uh, every Christmas, has not recovered economically since then. And there is no economic recovery in sight. OK, and for that reason, um, the, uh, the idea of uh, what do we do about coal miners who have lost jobs is one that's very personal to me. Okay? And so for that reason, um, I am just uh, incredibly honored, uh, actually, to, uh, to welcome here today uh, Rusty Justice. So Rusty is uh, the co-owner um, of a company named BitSource. And, uh, and Rusty is an entrepreneur, um, uh, a coder, um, uh, and a licensed coal miner. And, uh, and BitSource uh, employs uh, former coal miners uh, to take jobs in software development. So uh, Rusty, welcome to MIT. Well, good morning. Thank okay. you for having me here. OK. So, um, so Rusty, uh, tell us about BitSource. 
Give us the story here. <clears throat> well, uh, BitSource is kind of uh, the, the proof of the adage, uh, life's what happens while you make other plans. And uh, we, uh, in 2012, 13, uh, had a terrible decline in our industry, which is the primary economy for our region for over 100 years. And, um, and so my partner, Lynn Parrish, and myself were looking for ways to diversify uh, our businesses and uh, find things and opportunities that we could do uh, there that, because uh, we could see the decline coming. And so um, we started looking around for, for opportunities. And so many things that work elsewhere don't work in the mountains just due to the topography. So, uh, you know, manufacturing, large-scale manufacturing or agriculture, things of that nature, uh, just don't make sense there. So we came across uh, the, the uh, uh, idea of uh, software development, that there was a, um, um, a need for it, there was a demand, and that it had equivalent earning potential to the mining jobs that we lost. So, you know, every, every coal miner in our region makes three times the uh, average median income of, the, of other jobs in our region. And then every coal miner has about five support jobs. So to the tax base, a mining job is, is eight jobs to the tax base. So the addition or loss of a coal miner to, uh, to the economy, is, the tax base is huge. So, so we came across software development, had an earning potential that was equivalent, and we thought, hey, let's look into this. So how did you go down the road of becoming a software developer? Well, actually, I, I'm a mining engineer, <laughs> and, and I had some you know, coding and, and early on in, in, in college, when I was in college, and was familiar with, with coding and uh, old, old languages that you know, obviously we no longer use, but I understood how it worked and, uh, and, and that it... Like uh, Fortran. Fortran. Had Fortran <laughs> with a card reader. <laughs> that that kind of dates me. But uh, uh, anyway, the um, uh, when we found that there was this to me this huge demand, we thought, you know, we Lynn and I had a great respect for this workforce that we'd worked with all of our careers, and we knew so many uh, talented, intelligent people. And and unlike what people think, mining is is very uh, complex. Uh, you know, it's very technologically driven. Uh, that's why, you know, like as you were referring to earlier, uh, so much uh, technology has displaced uh, over, the, over the years the miners. And, uh, uh, you know, what was uh, once uh, labor work is now done robotically and remotely and, and uh, remote sensing. All those things are things that we, we use there. So, uh, so tell, us, uh, tell us about the services that BitSource provides? Well, uh, we, we, uh, we work in uh, three uh, platforms primarily. We work in Unity, uh, Xamarin, and Drupal. We, uh, we do our uh, web services and things, database work a lot in Drupal, uh, you know, using a lot of the base languages. And then uh, Unity, uh, we do uh, our augments and, and games and things and that. And then uh, Xamarin, we build our applications uh, that work across on both Android and uh, iOS. And uh, so we're working in all those areas. Uh, what we did is uh, we, we looked for um, a, a, a personality profile of a, uh, of a software developer, and we, we tested against that in, uh, in uh, both thinking style, behavior, and interest. And so uh, take me, for example. Um, I wouldn't be a very good software developer and that it's interesting to me, and I think like one, but I don't have the behavior, I have a short attention span. When well, mining, it's a process where you, you have to sit and mine. You have to be there at the face to mine the coal. So you're used to sitting eight, eight hours or 10 hours and doing a, a, a thing. And so it's, uh, it requires that, uh, that uh, ability to think about something for a prolonged period of time. So, so what you're saying here is that there are actually attributes of being a coal miner that are actually, you know, very transferable and uh, and actually very helpful. A lot of transferable skills so. in mining and uh, to software development. You know, it's collaborative, uh, uh, it's problem solving, and uh, and it's analytical. And uh, those are all things. I had a fellow from Carnegie Mellon tell me recently. Uh, I took him to a, a coal mine, and he said the the commonality that he saw 
between mining and, uh, and software development was it wasn't, neither one of them were really hard, they were complicated. And so uh, that was really an interesting way to think about it. So, um, so if you're a former coal miner, okay, and you leave the employment of a mine in eastern Kentucky, okay, what is the pathway that you might take to wind up at BitSource or some other company? Well, that that, that's, the, pro that's yeah. the problem, really. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's why we started BitSource. Um, uh, there weren't there weren't tech jobs in our region, so you know we're we're the first tech company I was ever in. <laughs> so uh, I didn't even or Lynn didn't even know what one looked like. And so uh, we found uh, uh, folks to you know that could help us uh, down that path. But um, uh, you know what we did is we advertised for ten ten slots, and uh, we took people from this place from the industry. And we ran an advertisement. We had 950 applications for 10 open seats, which speaks to the magnitude of the problem. And, uh, and then we, we tested. And because we had such a, a large cross uh, number, we had the luxury of developing a cross-section of the area, the region, and the workforce. So we have uh, employees now that were underground miners. We have employees that were surface miners. And we have employees that work in industry support, so machinery services or uh, engineering, things like that. And so, and then we selected them from all across the region. So what we were able to do is develop a good cross-sectional representation of the, uh, you know, a, a good sample size of, of, of what's possible there. So, so these, uh, these miners, they, they didn't necessarily have a college degree, correct? Okay. Most of them don't. Most of them don't yeah. have a college degree. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, we were told when we were doing our fact-finding that uh, uh, coding was like it was a trade like welding. And I always thought of coding as computer science. And, uh, and so, uh, of course, we had employed a lot of welders. So we, they, they spoke to us in a language that we understood when they described it to us. So, so as, we, as we looked into it and did, did some fact finding, and uh, we said, hey, th this makes sense because so many things don't make sense in the mountains when you're geographically bound like we are in the mountains of eastern Kentucky. And uh, through fiber optic cable, our work product can go anywhere in the world and be competitive uh, with any product uh, manufactured anywhere in the world. So we use the hashtag, uh, instead of exporting coal, we export code now. That's what we do. Okay, well, that's, that's fantastic. So, um, so you, you're a coal miner, you leave the industry, and you need to be trained. Yes. Okay. And, and so and you're a you're a company. You are not a training and, and organization. And we were, we were so, mistaken and so, confused for yeah. a, a training company yeah. because we hired yeah. uh, un unskilled workers uh, with aptitude, mm -hmm. and then uh, we we gave them training until they uh, uh, you know they reached a certain level of proficiency. And for us, we set that at 22 weeks. And so after 22 weeks, then we entered the marketplace. But we, all these folks that work at BitSource were unemployed. They were drawing unemployment. And we used a government grant that actually paid them. So they went from unemployment to employment on day one. And, uh, and from um, unemployment, then they had a job. And, uh, and so we, we got a, a, a training grant, and the money went for their okay. training. We so did the training of them with our money. So who... Um who, where did the training grant come from? So I'm, it was I'm trying, a I'm Department to, of Labor. I'm sorry, okay, it's a Department so, of Labor grant. Okay, so I'm trying to, you know, I, I think people in, there are going to be a lot of people in the audience who are very interested in this model okay, right. of well, training. Uh, so. There was a, a lot of money set aside for displaced workers mm -hmm. in, the, in the downturn. That was part of uh, uh, the response to that. And those monies were available. So was this ARA funding, the uh, American Recovery no, it was not uh, ARA. It was uh, it was uh, it was a, a DOL funding, and I'm okay. I'm not quite sure exactly okay. the what what it was. Was it specific for coal miners? It came, yes, it, okay. it was home hiring our miners every day. Home okay. money was the right. uh, yeah, and so um, uh, anyway, we we were able to use that money. Now, what we did, you know, what made us different also is we did this with private investment. We put our own money into this thing, so we. We never received any of the money. The money went 100% to the, to the worker because he really didn't have a skill. And then we hired the folks that gave them the skills and, uh, and surrounded them with the management structure and the infrastructure and all the things that's required. And, 
and uh, and we worked at it diligently, and uh, uh, and they've uh, they've really excelled. Okay, so so tell us now about um, the people that you hired to provide the training for these. What was well, where did they come from, and what was their everyone background? at BitSource is okay. from Eastern Kentucky, so okay. we we feel like it's a place based solution. Uh, to to a local problem, and uh, so we we have uh, a, a person there that's from there that's been our lead tech uh, person, and 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 he was a software developer. That's what he did. He was an architect, and uh, we got him to to take that role, and he's done a really excellent excellent job at that. And so uh, and we recruited uh, everyone, like I say, everyone that works there. And there's not a lot of people that work there. And there's there's. Uh, 13 employees, and then we surround the company with support from our other businesses for all the, the management you know, features of the company, payroll, risk management, all those things. Okay, and you, again, hire locally. You know. Everyone, Everyone there is local, yeah. Everybody there is local, okay. So, um, so you, you have area, so you didn't use a formal um, local community college or or university no, I, system to provide. I'm actually vice your chair of our local community college, so uh, but I didn't use it because it didn't have the programs that were current. Uh, okay. You know, coding changes so quickly that uh, a lot of times um, uh, the institutions lag behind when things when things uh, not just coding. Uh, we, we call it the speed of business happens so quickly that a lot of times institutions, or at least locally, our institutions can lag behind. They've caught up, but. But you know, we needed it then. We needed the jobs then because uh, you know we were in a crisis. Okay, so it seems like there is a role, though, for local community colleges. Oh, very much a role. Uh, and, and like I say, they, since then they've worked very hard and they've 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 re retooled, and so they're ready to do it now. And so they 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 could do it. And and so if if so, let's fast forward to today. Okay, mm -hmm. so if a miner leaves a mine today in eastern Kentucky. Um, would you still do the training in house? Or no, would I don't. You I don't think we would to, have to do that anymore, okay. and, and and we wouldn't want to do that anymore if we okay. could avoid it. I mean, that's very expensive and time consuming. It takes a lot of your efforts to do that. But you know, uh, I would make another point. The skills training. You know, when we started BitSource, we said we had three challenges, and the first challenge is can we retool this workforce? And so. Due to the fact that we had such uh, an outpouring of people showing, you know, wanting a job, you know, we were able to 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 select uh, this representative sample, and uh, and we we checked that box. We we believe that our workforce is as capable as any workforce there. They have a great work ethic. Uh, you know, they're they're just really good. Our technical rigor and and our uh, creativity are both very high when people look at it, and. Uh, and so uh, we believe that. Then, then we had to build a, um, a management team. How do you price a product you've never built, and uh, and and with a workforce that's never built it before? You know, that's a management challenge. What are the metrics of productivity? I can tell you the metrics of productivity of a coal mine. I can tell you that. But uh, what are the metrics of productivity that you? What do you measure to 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 find out how good you are? And and we figured that out. It's 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 been a process. And then the, the third challenge is uh, winning the respect of the marketplace. And so uh, how do we do that? How do we convince uh, the world that, uh, you know, people, coal miners from Appalachia can work at a high level? And, uh, and that's really the challenge we face now because we're ready to grow. Right. So you're in a, you're, you're, you know, open for business, obviously, but you're really in a demonstration phase mm -hmm. to... Yeah. Show that your products, yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, Eastern Kentucky. Satisfy needs, right? Yeah, we're on the other side of the digital divide. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we don't have uh, ubiquitous broadband everywhere, and it's expensive what we get. And uh, and so uh, we kind of think of ourselves as the as the first uh, maybe uh, walk bridge across that canyon to a tech sector in, in, in Appalachia because we think tech works in the mountains. It's, it's a, something that can work that can change those long-standing problems that we face there. Well, it's probably, it's probably worth talking a little bit about broadband access yeah. and how, uh, how, how crucial that is because um, so these, uh, you know, if we go back and we think about the, the new jobs in the energy sector, okay, so, you know, natural gas, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to go to where the natural gas is, okay, and then uh, 
renewables, these jobs are, um, are not coming to coal country. Okay, they're not coming to areas where you have. And so if you, you know, if you can train um, a former miner to be a coder, then, uh, then it seems like there's a lot of other technical jobs that a coal miner can be trained to. Um, but a great deal of them are, are going to need the internet access. Okay? And yes. So, um, so you say you have some broadband access, yes. but that the area in general mm -hmm. is still a challenge. So yeah, it, why don't you talk about you know, the... Well, if you, you come to, to, yeah. to Pikeville and visit us at Bit, Bit Source, we sit in an old Coca-Cola bottling plant. And it's a beautiful building. It gets a lot of attention. But the reason we bought it is because there's a, there's a fiber optic cable on the telephone pole in the front of the building. That, that was our entire reason for buying the building. Wow. And, uh, and we have a, a local hospital employs about 3,500 people. And uh, we have a university there in Pikeville called uh, UPIC. And, uh, uh, and, and that cable, uh, that, that fiber optic cable goes to those two institutions and we're just down the street from them. So, uh, so we've tapped into that. We have, ex it's very expensive and uh, it's not everything we need. We, we peg the needle on our, our bandwidth almost every day. So this is really, I mean, it's almost like a fortunate accident that happened here. If there yeah. wasn't that Coca-Cola bottling plant that happened to have a, <laughs> right. a, a fiber. Yeah, you know, it just happened to be there. Okay. And so, uh, so that's, that's why we're located there. And, uh, and, uh, and so <clears throat> if we're gonna change the, these persistent problems in Appalachia, you know, I think technology is, is key to that. And, uh, and, and the first step of that is getting uh, broadband fiber, you know, across the region because, uh, you know, the digital divide is a real thing and uh, it's really uh, fundamental. You know, I'm, an, I'm a civil engineer, so the foundation is the most important thing of any building and, uh, and, the, and broadband fiber is that foundational thing that we need there. So if we're thinking about the future of jobs and, um and, and you know, many federal investments are being made, and the question is, you know, how how can the federal government best invest in creating new jobs? I, I think one of the things that's coming out of this conversation is really an investment in broadband in some of these areas. Without where, a doubt, yeah. it's one of the it's one of the first things you have to have. And then, uh, you know, there's another challenge. Uh, there's a, uh, a stereotype, you know, I always tell everybody I'm an unapologetic hillbilly, you know, that's what I am, and, uh, and so that's what I'll always be, and uh, there's a stereotype about that, you know, uh, and, uh, and so uh, when you uh, are in a region that has this perception, it's a, it's a challenge to the outside world, but, you know, to a certain extent we've bought into that ourselves, that negative thing, so changing the narrative is equally as important as the skills as the skills uh, leveling, you know, we have to talk about who we are, what we are. We have to own it. And uh, so it's very interesting. Your website, so you should check out Bitsor Bitsource's website. Um, you know, you uh, you embrace it. You I know, do. You embrace the fact that uh, yeah. that you come from that area, that you're hillbillies, oh, yeah. um, right. and, and that you write great code. Oh yeah, so. and uh, we do. And uh, you know, uh, the fact that uh, we 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 talk uh, uh, funny, you know. Uh, <laughs> It, uh, it's, it's not really, uh, that's not an IQ test. That, that's really the old, everybody, oldest form. Everybody here is from all over the place. Yeah, so we I all know talk it. funny. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I feel at home here. <laughs> so, okay, so um, let's talk about um, cultural acceptance uh, of, uh, of what you do um, in Kentucky. So, um, so automation, the, at least the, the perception slash reality is that automation uh, causes jobs to go away, okay? And, uh, and so, um, so people who are uh, involved in high technology are the bad guys, okay? And, um, and here you are in Kentucky and, uh, and coal jobs are going away and you're in this old Coca-Cola building and you know, the, we had some folks up from, uh, from Eastern Kentucky about a month ago, and, uh, and what we heard from them is, well, when the, the truck leaves the mine and it's carrying coal in it, um, all of us understand what's going on in that mine, okay? But when you got this building, okay, and you got people writing code in there, nobody understands what's going on um, in that building. 
Okay. So what do you have to do? How, what, is, what has been your level of acceptance within your community? Well, we, we've, uh, we've been, really, we, we think that BitSource was hopeful. It brought hope in a time when uh, it, it's, it's gotten a lot of attention uh, because it, it was something that gave people their hope. You know, uh, one of the things about being from where I'm from is uh, we, we say that, you know, we're not in the mountains, the mountains are in us. And, uh, and so um, uh, people don't want to leave, they want to stay there. You know, you hear so many people say the solution to the problems of Appalachia are to leave it. Well, that's just untenable to us. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, we want to be there amongst our family units, our friends. You know, my, my daughter Elon's here today. She's the fifth generation of my family to be born in the big Sandy River Valley. So, uh, you know, we have deep roots there and, and a long, long past and a history. And, and so, uh, you know, the mountains just are part of who we are. And, and people from, from Appalachia would, uh, would, I think, if opportunity were there, would, a lot of them would go home. I mean, they, they would be there. And, and it really doesn't help us if we train people there and then they leave, then that exacerbates the problems of the region. And when you look, you know, we, we're in some of the poorest part of the country. And so the solution is, is, is not to, uh, to leave it. The solution is to to do something about it. Well, certainly. So, you know, in, in my own case, um, uh, you know, when I talk about the problems uh, of the loss of jobs in anthracite country, and they say, well, the answer is easy. You just do what you do. You just left, yeah. right? And, uh, and of course, you know, it's one thing when you're 18 years old and you're smart and you get a full ride to an Ivy League school, OK? Then, yeah. then that's an easy decision. Um, when you're, uh, you know, when you're working and supporting your family and you're in your 40s and 50s and you've got a mortgage and you've got children at home and you've got aging parents, um, the decision to leave the area is a, is a much more difficult one to make. <clears throat> yes. You know, uh, our, our developers range in age from uh, 35 is the youngest and I think 50 is maybe the oldest and, uh, and you know, most of them, they, They'd lost their job. They had maybe a spouse that, that had a job there, or they had children there they didn't want to leave. And so a lot of the people that could leave, we've had an out-migration from the region. And those are the, you know, the high earners, the, the, the people that really contribute to society. And that really then, uh, it uh, condenses everything that goes on there and exacerbates the problem. So as a percentage, you know, the, uh, you know, the number of, uh, and then it exacerbates all the other problems like opioid use. I mean. If Pike County, where I'm from, were a state, uh, it would be second only to West Virginia in opioid deaths uh, per, uh, per capita. And so, uh, you know, that's one of BitSource's uh, projects. We're building an opioid response app to get naloxone to overdose victims as a result of an MIT hackathon. So these relationships between, you know, Fantastic. the theoretical and the real, they matter. They make a difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, so let's talk about uh, how do you get your story out to the world? Okay, so you're here today. You're, yeah. you're at MIT. You're on the big stage. Yeah. Okay, that helps a little bit. But uh, what has been, you know, how have you gone about your marketing and, you know, and, and uh, your customers? Uh, yeah, have they been local we, or have they been? We, we had a strategy. Uh, we yeah. wanted to work locally first with, uh, you know, early adopters, uh, people that really wanted to see us succeed. So. You know, we built a tourism website, one of our first projects for the for the local uh, city government there in Pikeville, and so we worked locally for people that that wanted that and 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 kind of got our feet wet doing that, because we started out if we were all coal miners, we'd be what we call green hat coal miners. I could train everyone here and give you all the qualifications to go in a coal mine, and and when we sent you in the coal mine, you'd have a green hat which tells all the other coal miners, beware of that person because they'll get you killed. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, eventually by working with more experienced miners, you skill up and then you become, you actually become a coal miner. So what we had at BitSource were 10 green hats. And, uh, and so it wasn't pretty, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it, it was painful to do, but we, we've learned and we've learned quickly, uh, build, measure, learn, pivot. You know, that, that's been our fail forward, fail fast, fail often, you know. And, uh, and so uh, we, uh, we've done it, and, uh, and so now we have developers. So we wanted to work locally, then regionally, then nationally, and then internationally. 
Now, we've not yet done any work internationally, but we're working for, uh, we have developers in Pikeville today working in Silicon Valley. So, uh, you know, for companies there are doing work because what we've learned is we have domain expertise. Uh, people with a, with a career before them uh, actually have real world experience and that's very beneficial in the software development field, you know. So we're building several products where our, our developers have knowledge in. So, uh, so at, at this point in time and where you're at, uh, what's holding you back? What's 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 preventing you from taking uh, okay. the, the next three, step? Okay, the three the steps was can we can we do it? And we've convinced ourselves of that, and we've had uh, you know third party verification of that, and uh, and then um, can we manage it? And we can. And so what's holding us back? Are we're ready to grow? Uh, we need connections uh, with the marketplace, and we need the marketplace to have confidence in us because we don't come from that background. We came from uh, from mining, and we knew everyone in the mining uh, supply chain from the power, the consumers of the product, the shippers of the product, the workforce of the product, uh, you know, the, uh, and the the, the 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 equipment suppliers. We knew all those people in that network, and so we're trying to build that network of connections here, and then we have to overcome that stereotype because we don't have a track record, and then we have this regional stereotype. So we're really selling into a, to a headwind. And so we always tell all of our developers that uh, they're like the Mercury 7. They're the ones that proved we could go into space. They have done that. And now we're, we've leveled them up at another level. We have, we have uh, people ready to come in under them. We're just waiting for, for the marketplace to give us an opportunity. So maybe, um, you, know, you know, one strategy you might take in moving ahead is, uh, you know, Positioning yourself as being part of, you know, the next, the energy transition yeah. okay, and the energy rev revolution, and yeah. and really kind of looking into that sector to to target, yeah. right? Bringing, you know, what can you do in terms of green jobs, software development, because yeah. uh, because you know the whole, you know, we've heard a lot here both yesterday and today about how, um, you know, we're creating more jobs that go away yeah. uh, as the as things, and in the um, you know, the complaint in the energy sector is always, yes, we're getting all these new jobs, but, uh, but they're not going to the people who have been displaced from, yeah. from other jobs. Well, yeah, and I read a book that's talking about, the, and this is the, the problem with averages, using averages in, in any analysis. As the temperature for grandma for the last three days was 70 degrees, but what they don't tell you on day one, it was minus 70, on day two it was 70, and day three it was... Uh, you know, it was higher, so it averages out to 70 all day, but grandma's dead, so uh, it, 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 it didn't matter, you know. And so uh, averages, uh, like you say, it, it, we're, uh, we need jobs in central Appalachia, and, uh, and technology is a key to doing that, and we recognize it's disruptive. It's a disruptive to a lot of fields of, of uh, progress, and, uh, and so... Uh, you know, we just need to uh, embrace that. That's the reality, and we need to become proficient in, in technology, and then deal with the changes from there. Now, have you been contacted by um, by others who who want to reproduce this model? Maybe not even with yeah, the same. Yeah, we, we've been contacted by folks in other coal fields. You know, uh, Colorado, uh, Montana, uh, lots of people. We've gotten a lot of attention, and we haven't really sought any attention. Uh, we were just trying to, to do our thing, but it's so counterintuitive. I think what we've done, I always say we're like the Jamaican bobsled team of tech. And so uh, <laughs> uh, we, uh, we just uh, you know, go along and, and uh, you know, we're focused, what we're focused on is being a center of excellence. We believe bit sources is the, the ground zero of a, of a not just bit source growing, we see bit source can grow and we have a growth strategy. Uh, but we see that a tech sector can exist in central Appalachian, Appalachia as a solution to the, the, this persistent poverty problem we've had. And so, so obviously as the company grows, um, other businesses will you know, spring up around it to yes, support. Exactly. That, and, that's and there's been other people, uh, there's a couple other tech companies already taking root in, in central Appalachia already. So, so they followed our example. Wouldn't that be fantastic if there was a tech sector? Uh, it, it, uh, it really, it country. really would be. And and you know, uh, techies like the things that we have there. I mean, you know, uh, we, uh, you know, we have uh, uh, whitewater rafting to you know rock climbing and 
outdoor activities, all the things that the young folks in tech like, you know, we, we've got there. And it's, it's a really wonderful place. And so obviously, um, you know, the, uh, the cost of living is yeah, very competitive there. Oh, so. yeah, we have, a, we have a low cost of living. So. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's really, you know, I can't say enough good things about it. Okay, well, we're, we're, um, it's the witching hour here, and, okay. uh, and it's time for us to finish up. And my last question to you was going to be, why are you optimistic? But the whole, basically our whole conversation has been one of optimism. Well, because I see that it works. You know, we've, we've, we've put our own money into this. You know, we're serious about it because we've invested our personal capital into this. And, and, uh, and we see that this works. This has, uh, uh, this makes sense and, uh, from every level, and uh, we think it can succeed. What we just have to do is overcome those hurdles that we've discussed, and, and, and things like this really will, will help with that, I believe. So Great. thank you very much. Okay, so Rusty Justice, thank you very much for uh, talking. Uh -huh.